Hi, it's Chris from Stamp Blessings, and I'm here today to talk to you about mixing watercolor paints. And this is something I just learned from close to my heart, and I'm really excited to share it with you. I'll go ahead after my video and link their video in the comments below so that you can find it easily. But um, this is going to be a little bit of a how-to, and I'm going to show you. Mm, it's pretty easy, but you also have to kind of pay attention. So I was really excited that they provided a how-to mix color. And I'm going to also share the link for this. Hi, Melissa. I'm so glad you could join us today. In fact, that reminds me, if you're watching live or if you're watching the replay, make sure you leave a comment or an emoji that lets Facebook know that you're interested in seeing my videos. And I'll come back and leave comments back, of course. And I'll also be sharing this on YouTube later. So go ahead and like or give comments and I'll be sure to comment back. So anyway, I'm going to share this link, but this is what Close to My Heart provided. Here are the original paints, and then they show you how to match the paints by mixing them with their exclusive colors. And I'm not gonna be able to get my whole screen on there, but you can see the first line is Desert Rose, Lilac, Clover, and Toffee. So by mixing these paints, and they give you the ratio, you can make a color to match the cardstock. And I'll be sharing that link so that you can print it out just like I did. And what I wanna do is kind of focus in, for instance, Fern, you have to mix um, number 28, number 15, and just a slight amount of number four. So what do I mean by those numbers? I can't really turn this over now because I do have wet paint in here, but if you can see, I numbered the top of my lid so that when I close it, you can see what numbers correspond and this matches how close to my heart starts. So they start with the white as number one and end up with the black as 36. What started all of this paint mixing is I wanted to use this new beautiful Isabella stamp set. And this is their scrapbooking set, but I just love this lemon and the leaves and it matches the Isabella uh, paper. Let me show you how beautiful it is. So with Close to My Heart, you know that paper is both always two-sided and you get different patterns. So I'll just quickly show you the beautiful colors. This is one side, and this packet you get two of each sheets. Then the back, so I guess what I could do is just go like this. So you have the front, this beautiful blue bell blue, and then the yellow pattern, and then this is kind of like an olive branch, and this beautiful lemon color. So that's what I was trying to do. I've been having the hardest time trying to match these leaves here in the paper. And the zip strip is nice because the zip strip tells me what colors come in the paper pack. It's ballerina, bluebird, evergreen, lemonade, mink, sage, sundance, toffee, and white daisy. So all along I was thinking evergreen, evergreen, but I had a scrap of sage laying next to this paper and I had an aha moment. So the inside color is sage and then the outside is evergreen. So I went to my trusty chart and went ahead and mixed up New England Ivy. And I'm not really sure why I did that except for that I probably wasn't paying attention and I had New England Ivy in my head. So I ended up mixing it up and this is the color I ended up creating. And it looked good in here and I thought, okay, I'm good to go. Well, let me show you the end results. While the card is pretty enough, this definitely was not the same match as my 
paper that I was trying to match. When I put them side by side, you can see how off those leaves are. But I'm not one to waste anything. And because these dies are retiring soon, I went ahead and wanted to make a card using them. And this is um, the Stitches and Sentiments stamp set, which you can still find in the online only section. So Close to My Heart is good about that. So just as a reminder, some of the dies that are retiring next month are these stitch dies, these stitch dies, they layer up, and this set of stitch dies, and also the lattice. So I'm going to be using this later. All right, so Melissa mentioned that she has a sampler ring, and I should have probably brought that up because that is something that um, we can get from close to my heart as a demo and if you ever need a su paper supply ring let me know because I think they're like $4.95 they're really reasonable and that way you don't have to chop into your paper well after the New England Ivy was a bust I went ahead and I made the sage and I made the lemonade and I made the mink but now I still have to do the evergreen and I thought that we could mix that together So it's good to have a diaper wipe or a paper towel when you're getting ready to mix these because I like to mix it with a water brush. That way I can add water right away. Again, I'll be sharing the link for this download for you and you can print it out in color or you can print it out in black and white and create your own. I'm thinking about putting this in a, a page protector just so that I always have it blank and I have the formula. So I wanna go ahead and do the evergreen and that says um, I want 30 and 31. So that's down here. I'm gonna look here and you am just a little bit off camera, wouldn't you know? So I'll go sideways. So 30, when I'm closing it, my lid is this color and this is 31. And I'm gonna put it up here by the sage so that I can keep it together. Since my lid does come off, I think what I'll do is pop it off so that you can follow me a little bit. All right, so I want the number 30 and I want um, 31 and I'm gonna take equal parts. One thing that I read about from Close to My Heart, which was a great tip, is add a little water ahead of time to just soften it up. So I'm going to do that. I need a little bit of, believe it or not, 18 for evergreen. And that's going to be this purple. So I'm going to add a little water there. I need a little bit of 25. So 25 is this blue. And then I need just a tiny amount of this yellow up here. And there you go, I got a little bit of discoloration in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up right away. That's why I like having a wipe. I'm gonna clean my water brush real quick and then try again and add a little bit of water. All right, so I am working on making evergreen. So the first color I wanna get is number 30. Just gonna go ahead and put it in I'm going to put it in this container here and I squeeze it, pick up a little bit more, and I want equal parts of 30 and 31. So I'm gonna wipe off my brush and get a little bit of 31 and squeeze that in there. Go ahead and mix those two together. So it's starting to get a dark green Let's see what other colors. They wanted 18, and 18 was just a small amount of 18, which was this here. I'm gonna pick it up, and I'll squeeze that in there. And then even less than that was a little bit of 25, so one little blob of 25, which was the blue. Go ahead and add that. So I've added purple and blue to my two greens. And the last thing I want is just a tiny bit of the yellow. So I definitely want to clean my brush before I go into that yellow. And I just pick up a little bit and I'm gonna add that in there. So now I've made my evergreen. Here's my sage from earlier. And I'm gonna try again to see if I can stamp this 
and get it a little bit closer to the paper that I want. So if you've ever heard of no line, uh, no line watercoloring, that's when instead of inking up in black, you ink up in a lighter color. And I am going to go ahead and ink up my image. I've already pre-cut this and I'm going to ink it up in mink and that will give me a nice uh, outline to follow but not take over the whole stamp or the whole image, sorry. So I'm gonna ink it up and I wanna make sure I get this nice and centered. Come right down and press. All right, so that's pretty close and it looks really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and start first with the yellow because I know I've tested that and that was perfect. What I'm not sure about is again, the leaf. So I'm gonna just wet this up cause it had dried from before. And I'm gonna go ahead and add, I'm using white daisy cardstock. White daisy is not watercolor paper from close to my heart, but it is still it, it just takes watercolor so nicely. So I'm really happy with that. And look at that, I got a little dimension right away. Um, sometimes white cardstock, if you're not using a watercolor paper, if you're familiar with it, wherever you touch, you get a huge saturation and it won't move. So in this case, um, the white daisy, even though it's not watercolor, it does go ahead and move. I did go mix up a little bit of the mink and I'm just gonna add a little water to that. And I'm using that just to add a little bit of color and detail to my flower, just to give it a little dimension. I'm not really doing anything fancy. I'm just kind of doing a little scribble just to give it some color. Maybe what I'll do is pull that out a little bit. What I like about watercolor is it's not precise. So I don't have to go out all the way to the edges and, um, and it still looks good. So I like that. Really, you can't go wrong with watercolor, I think. So it's a little bit darker than I had wanted, but I could always go in and try and lighten it up or add a little bit more color. Or if you feel like it, you can always press down with your paper towel or whatever you have and pull up some color. So I'm gonna just leave it like that. So now here's my moment of truth. Did I get a good mix for the evergreen and did I get a good mix for the sage? And I'm gonna try it now. This is just kind of my um, idea piece. I don't have to do it exactly like that, but that's what I'm kind of striving for. So I'm gonna go ahead first with the sage. And it looks like that the sage is in the middle of the leaves. I'm just gonna compare that and see. Oh, I think that's a really good match. I don't know if you can tell that, but I'm really getting the same color from the inside of the leaves for that. So I know that my sage, I did a good job mixing that. Now, if I wanted, I could just stop there and call it victory. Because really, if I was to layer that, it wouldn't look bad at all. But now that I've mixed up this evergreen, I'm really tempted to just try it. And I don't want to get too much because it's obviously darker. I'm going to just pull it on. Make sure I don't get it into that lemon. And I'm really happy with that too. So I would suggest if you are going to try mixing these paints, that you try it first maybe on a, sc a scratch. I had the second one cut right away so that if I had to go back and add any extra paint, I could do that. But right now, if I were to lay this on here with like a, a white border, I feel like that leaf really matches well. And that's something that I have actually been struggling with, believe it or not, all week. I have tried my watercolor paints, just straight watercolor paints. I've tried two different kinds of watercolor pencils and I just didn't get it. And then I remembered that I had shared this watercoloring video from close to my heart. 
and I thought, well, I'm gonna go ahead and try mixing these paints. So let me go ahead and finish this leaf. I'm just really excited about the sage and how the evergreen turned out. Oh, and one other thing that I did try, I tried direct ink. So what I did is I put the evergreen ink pad down on, a, on my craft mat and picked up the ink with my water brush and even that did not match these leaves as well as this is doing right now. So again, I'm really happy with the results of just taking a few minutes and following close to my heart's recipe, which I'll share later. And I was able to match these colors really, really nicely. So I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit more. Remember, it's easy to um, add more but you can't take it away usually too well so just want to add a little bit there well to be honest I wasn't sure if I was going to get a great match so I kind of set up my next card with a, a mink card base and when I bought my Isabella close to my heart paper pack I bought the coordinating card stock right away. And so what I like to do then is that way I have all the colors that are gonna match it perfectly. Oh, and this is how I knew then that sage was the color that I needed because I had a scrap of sage laying out and then I saw how perfectly those greens match. So that was kind of my aha moment. So what I'll do is, oh, I need to pop out a couple more of these. I used my dryer sheet idea from last week. I don't know if you saw last week's Monday Motivation, but I shared how running through um, dryer sheets through your embossing folders or your folders really made a nice difference. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. And I'm going to do that really quickly. I'll just take a moment to line up. I love this little scallop border. It's so dainty and it's just really, really nice. So I wanna get that straight though before I kind of press down. That's the nice thing about glue. It gives you just a minute to play with it. Sometimes though, then it keeps wiggling. So you have to really kind of set it and then put it aside and then just leave it which I have a hard time doing sometimes. But I'll go ahead and I'll stick my block on it to let it just sit for a minute. So then next I have this, and this turned out a little bit darker than I want, but the good news is that actually, um, close to my heart inks, these paints dry a little bit lighter. But what I thought is, why don't I just grab some of the white and go over it? Again, I wanna make sure I clean my brush so that, because the last color was um, a dark green and I just want to come in and just add a little bit of a white and that might soften it a little bit as it dries. Yeah, it's going to take off some of that darker color because I was a little bit heavy handed. So remember I said you can, you can add more, but it's hard to take it away. So I guess one tip is to just add a little white over it. And that's what close to my heart said. If you want to lighten a color, you add a little white. And if you want to darken a color, you add just a little bit of black. So um, we have had beautiful weather here the last couple of days. The heat wave has broken. So we're in the upper 80s, but we are not hitting the feels like, uh, feels like 100 temperatures, which I am really happy about. Just left my glue open, so I'm going to close that up. So this should be nice and dried, and I thought it would be nice to have a sentiment popped up and um, a nice bold sentiment. So I brought up this retired stamp set from close to my heart, and it's called Word Fetty. And it helps me that a lot of times I emboss, I white emboss on a black piece of cardstock, a sentiment. But in this case, they're all ready to go. They're giving me the black behind it. So um, I'm going to say, uh, 
I think I just want to thank. I am overdue. I'm embarrassed to stay. I have to send out a lot of thank you cards, and I promise to get them out. After tomorrow, tomorrow I'm having a card workshop in my house, and tomorrow, as uh, tomorrow and Wednesday, so I'm having my first workshop since COVID, and I'm really excited. And I think the folks who are signed up to come are going to be excited too to just get together. So look how nice that is. And what I like about this is I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like when I emboss. Even though it's white, it's just a little bit kind of yellowish. It's more like our French white. And I did bring up foam. I just have to find it. My work area, each time I film, I'm in a little bit of a different spot. So I'm just kind of looking, where did I stick the foam? Well, let's cut it out in the meantime. And I'm gonna leave just a little bit of a border because this is so small, I feel like I can safely hand cut it. If the lines are a lot longer, if the if it's a lot longer than I have to try and cut straight, then I wouldn't be able to do it. And Melissa says she wishes she could be B E E at my workshop too, and so do I, because it would be nice to have you here in person, Melissa. Melissa and I have known each other now. I think what is it, five years maybe. Actually, it might be even longer, Melissa, I'm thinking. But anyway, so uh, unfortunately, I cannot find my, fun, my foam right now. But I'm just going to go ahead and pop this down. And to give it a little dimension, I'm not going to put um, glue on the entire back so that some of it will stay popped up. And I, I like having that lemon down there. And I'm going to just add a little glue and put that sentiment kind of hanging off, but just like that. So that is a really quick and easy card. So you can see now my original New England Ivy fail of a leaf, but since I put it on paper that didn't, you know, have to be that color, that was okay. And here I used the mink a lot lighter. I was less heavy handed and I do like that result. I'm hoping though that this is still wet enough that it's gonna dry and this has been drying for a while now. But here you have two really clean and simple cards using the Isabella stamp set. It's the scrapbooking stamp set and die, the coordinating die, which I love that Close to My Heart offers that. And then I have some retiring dies that are uh, retiring. Thin cuts, this background die and um, these shapes that are bracketed or you know um, they're layered so those are really nice anyway thank you for tuning in and i hope that you will give it a try to try and mix your own paints remember the key is to number them i used a sharpie so then when i close it i'll know exactly which paints that i need to um to mix and these here i'm just going to leave them for a little longer until i'm tired of painting lemons and uh, flowers and leaves and then I'll clean it out and start all over again. I'm also thinking maybe I could go to the dollar store and get some of those little containers where you put vitamins in or I've done in the past contact containers when I need just a small amount of ink. A contact container would be great for this and then my lid is not impaired and I can close it. So I would think that's maybe a tip that I would share in the future. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to my Monday Motivation. I hope you have a great week. I hope you try painting and mixing colors, and I will see you next week. Bye.